Let's bring him on two-time Super Bowl champ. You see him on Speak after our show. Actually, a couple shows after ours. LaShawn McCoy, Shady. What? Bring in the bring in the oh, week one, baby. Come on now. Um, Eagles win. Why not? Why not? Well, it is interesting. We talked about this, that you've had a lot of coaches in your career and I coordinators. We all talk about head coaches. Yeah. But coordinators matter, too. They do. So Steichen was great with a rookie, Justin Herbert. Yep, yep. Then he makes Jalen an MVP. Anthony Richardson had some moments yesterday. And my yes. takeaway was when I watched Philadelphia, they did look a little off without Shane. Yeah. Yep. Were you concerned? Well, no, I'm not concerned. Um, it's week one, right? We got the win. But when you don't – Jalen Hurts didn't play this, this um, preseason. Right. That matters. And I think that uh, a little rusty. And I always go back to myself. You know, once I got to a certain part of my career, a lot of coaches, they didn't play me in the preseason games. Right, right. right? And, and I, I liked it because it's cool. Yeah, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm reserving me for the real game. But when I got to the real game, I was rusty. It's something about – Getting hit. Getting hit. Or, or live bullets as far as you throwing the ball, guys on your face, for running back handoffs, guys grabbing the ball, t- high and tight, t- like all them small things you don't think about, it really matters. And I just think that I'm not worried about um, the Eagles' offense at all. I think Jalen Hurts, I went to the, uh, the practice, the scrimmage with him, them and the um, Colts. Had a good time to talk to him, and that was the first time really speaking to him, like a real conversation. His mentality as a leader, it's real. And, and the thing that he has, a lot of players don't have that. So he's going to get better. As you've seen his career, he's got better and better and better. He's a serious person. Oh, and he's 24. I couldn't even believe it. So I'll just say this as they answer the question. I think the Eagles will be fine. Um, you know, once he gets the rust knocked off a little bit, getting a game or two, you know, Nick Sirianna talked about that. Like, he, if he had to do it all over again, right. he would play him. And I think every player should do that. I mean, because I struggle with that too. So I've said this, that um, is um, – For a quarterback, the NFL is calculus. Yeah. It's always easier if you have a great tutor. Right, right. Yes, that's true. And I feel like offensive coaches are like tutors to young quarterbacks. So Jordan Love has an offensive coach, run game, O-line. Yep. Stability franchise. Yeah. Justin Fields, who I think is much more talented, O-line stunk yesterday, defensive coach, I don't know if Chase Claypool likes football. He didn't play very hard. But my takeaway was, when I watched those two play, the difference was I felt like Jordan Love had much better support. I felt like Justin Fields Uh-oh. was out there trying to make plays. Yeah, I, I, and, and I, see what you, I see what you're saying about that, I, and I can see that take. Um, Jordan Love looked pretty good, and, and I think you, you're right. You hit on the nail as far as having a supporting cast. Um, this simplified the office form, small things like um, – slants, some screens to, to get them going. Yes. Then as it got going, they started – That screen play. Yes. Then they started throwing the ball, you know, down the field. The running game helped out. I mean, he got some pretty good running backs. But I will say this. You know, it was a lot of talk about Justin Fields being this great athlete, which he is, yeah. and now being the quarterback of throwing the ball more this year. Yeah. He needed weapons. That was the thing last year. He needs weapons. He needs weapons. Yeah. And I was on the other side of it like, well, I think these wide receivers, these weapons, they need a quarterback. And when I really watch Justin Fields, I, I just don't see no – no real development. I don't see no 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 growth. That's what I it, I don't see it either. But but it looks the same as last year. Right. And and I, I had a big. I was critical on him as as a thrower, as a passer. I don't. You rarely see him go through all the reads. It's like one. He's not there. Okay. It's not. It's time to run. And the line. It's funny how. I guess it's been in the locker room. Like the line. If there's sacks. If if, if the ball's held for the quarterback too long, the linemen get the blame for that. And it shouldn't be like that. It shouldn't be like that. So. I think he has a lot more room for improvement, but he's still young. He is still a young quarterback. I just got to see it. I just got to see it. I I didn't see it yet at all yesterday. And by the way, the Green Bay defense was disappointing last year. I think Justin Fields' passer rating, J-Mac, it was like 78. And I'm like, that's his career average, to your point. (laughs) I feel like I'm seeing the same guy. Like, he's an unbelievable athlete. But Greg Olson said something during the broadcast. He said, as great a runner as you are, it has to be complimentary. It's your off-speed Come pitch. On. It Come can't on. like Josh Allen early. Yes, dude, running is the second pitch. Yep, throwing is your first. Absolutely right, I, I, and it's, it's a thing of in every position you have to have that to keep it balanced enough, right? I was more of a shifty guy. Guys can't really hit me, but if you would look at the broke tackles, I'm up there with the elites. I break tackles differently, and it can't just all be. You know, Fooling scat guys. stuff, cat, catch, and runner. No, right. sometimes you got to put it in there sometimes. Right. And I, I don't look at fields. Yeah, I, I see the talent. 
Um, with the offense like him or the guy, a quarterback like him in the offense, you can do so many different things. Right. Because the defense has to respect his ability to run. But like you just talked about, man, you got to throw it sometimes. If not, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be the same results you just seen yesterday. So um, I'm watching Miami against the Chargers. And that was, was a good one. That was a great that game. That was a good one. There was a play in that game. It looked like CFL football. I thought the motion was illegal. Right, right, okay. And I'm like, no, he was going forward. Miami, when I watch their game, I can see the coaching. It, it's, first of all, obviously, Waddle and Tyreek are crazy. But I feel like it's a prime example. Offensive coach, don't have a great O-line, yep. don't run it consistently. Tua looks so comfortable. Comfortable. And, and that's the new thing. It's funny how, like, in football, there's all these different errors, right? There was an error where you could have, like, a super crazy great defense, okay passing game, and, and a good running game. And you can win Super Bowls. If you look at the last Super Bowls, it's been offensive coaches, like you talked about, and quarterbacks, right? When I, when I watched the Dolphins, it, even from that coaching tree, right? McDaniels in that whole coaching tree. Yeah. He's crafty. Like, like the small things, right? Look at the way they, they, the players, they got the pieces around them. All speed. They was trying to get more speed with Dalvin Cook. Right. And, and, and the speed goes so well with the way he wants to coach. All that motion you talked about. Them dudes is talented, bro. They talented, man. And well, you can just see it. Yeah, San Francisco and, and Miami run essentially a lot of the same offense. Yes, they do. Where Brock Purdy and Tua, yep. and this is not a knock on them. They're distributors. They're distributors. Now, right? I think exactly. Tua is more talented yeah. than Brock Purdy. Breeze a lot quicker also. You okay, know. so let me ask you about the, the Pittsburgh game because – uh, not only did I like Pittsburgh to win, but it's just I did too. It's very rare when you see a Mike Tomlin team emotionless. Yeah. Uh, like first five drives, you're like, guys, this is not a preseason game. Wake up. Um, what was that? Have you ever been in a game and it feels like a big game and you come out of the tunnel and it is just there is no juice? Yeah, I mean, very rarely that happens, especially with them type of coaches. Mike Tomlin, he's always has his guys prepared. Oh, he's hell intense. of a coach. And they have some leadership. They have a lot of leadership over there. But I am surprised of how that game went because, like you said, I picked the Steelers to win that game. I, I truly did. But when you watched it, man, they, they got beat everywhere. I'm not used to seeing the, the, the Pittsburgh. You know, I'm with the school in Pittsburgh. Yeah. So I've seen it, the, the glory days, right? And, I, and none of it. No, no good moments. No, 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 no guys excited. None of that. None of that Steeler football. And like I said, I picked them to win um, on defense. I didn't see it. On offense, I surely didn't see it. Kenny Pickett, they, they, you know, they're gonna they're gonna kill him. Um, you know the way he played, but he didn't have a lot of time. They were in his face immediately. You know, they didn't run the ball well. I don't I don't know what's going on with Najee Harris. He didn't play a lot. Um, but they got a lot. They got a lot to fix over there. I thought this year the Steelers would would fight for that division, right? Um, but I don't know now. Hi everybody! Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out more of the best clips from The Herd or go watch a few segments from other shows on FS1.